personal experience with cancer started when I was age 16 and my boyfriend was diagnosed with acute leukemia. His parents decided what was best for him was to not tell, the, tell him that he had a terminal illness, but instead told me and my family and his best friend, Mark. My best friend died of leukemia when um, I was 15 and Margie was his girlfriend. So the three of us did a lot of things together. The good part that came out of this difficult experience was that uh, my now husband, Mark, who was Jim's best friend, said that he was going to dedicate his life to cure cancer. So this is, oncology is my calling, the foundation is our calling. So I think that's the little twist to, to our story, is going through such a difficult time as young people and coming out the other end of being able to, to help cancer patients and dedicate our lives together. It's something that energizes us and fulfills, it, fulfills us every day. So we constantly think of Jim, it's his name, constantly think of Jim as we uh, do this. And when Mark started at Minnesota Oncology, he was the fourth physician to start. And at that time, he recognized that there was a need in the clinic for someone to help the cancer patients with their non-medical needs. Oh, so many emotions. They almost become paralyzed because they have to process this. Their lives all of a sudden change. They're different. There was more to the cancer experience than just the physical part. There was an emotional, psychological, and spiritual issues that cancer patients were going through and often struggling with. They have to take care of their families, they have to work, they have to get money, they have to, and yet they have to deal with the hardships of understanding their cancers, getting chemotherapy, going through the side effects of chemotherapy or radiation and of course dealing with the ultimate unknown what's going to happen to me in the future. Some of the issues that I saw these cancer patients experience I truly believe compelled me to start the Angel Foundation. Difficult choices that nobody should have to make just because they've heard the words you have cancer. I had the seed money from Minnesota Oncology and I was able to grant financial assistance to our first cancer patient shortly thereafter. I think for the physicians it's nothing but advantageous for our patients to know that we are a strong financial supporter of this group that really does care about the other parts of them. Cancer patients, and met, just like many people, live from paycheck to paycheck and when they're diagnosed with cancer, um, the money isn't coming in. So financially it's been, it's been, yeah. it has been difficult. We've, last year we, uh, I did not work at all, and neither did she, and we went through both of our IRAs, and now we are now finishing up on a, uh, her pension fund. So once that's uh, here and gone, uh, that's pretty much it. One of the doctors called me into the exam room and on the first time he said, I have a patient and he can't work and he needs your help. His name was Bob and he had been a janitor all of his life. He had never gone a day without working and all of a sudden he was told by his physician, you have lung cancer and you have six months to live and you cannot work. You have to be here getting treatment. And I walked in and I was able to tell Bob that we would pay his rent, which was $300 a month, for the next three months while he went through his cancer treatment. And the look on his face is something I will never forget. He was um, humbled because he had never in his life taken anything from anyone. And I just said, this is something that we want to do for you. We want to make your life a little bit easier. We docs take care of the physical and the, the body, and Angel takes care of the heart. After we were able to help Bob with his rent, 
He called me in to see him in the chemo area and he said he had a gift for me. And in a little bag was a stuffed loon. And he said, this is all I have to give you, but I can't tell you how much it has meant to me of what you and the foundation has been able to do. And when I'm gone, every time you hear a loon, I just want you to think of me. And I do. When I was a teen and my father had cancer, I really would have benefited from having information because I feel that knowledge is power and also to have a support system that really got it. When my mom had cancer, not only did she have cancer, but it affected the entire family. And it's so awful to see a parent sick because you've always known them as like the strong base of your family and to have them sick and to see them weaker than what you ever thought could be. That's the hardest part. And if I would have had a group to be able to talk to and to be able to ask just basic questions, it would have really, really helped our whole family. I don't think any kids would able to lose their parents. The goal of Facing Cancer Together is to strengthen the entire family. We do that by offering education and support for the children, the teens, and the adults. I was so sick for so long and they were so scared and I needed to do something for them. We work with games or we sing with the little kids. We do a lot of journaling. We do a lot of strength-based activities so the children can really discover and hone some of the strengths that they have that they didn't even know they had. It has filled such a big void in my kid's life and my life. We focus on the whole family because cancer affects the entire family. The Angel Foundation is a perfect place if you have a parent with, a can with cancer to go meet other kids that are in the exact same situation as you. You can ask questions to people who aren't gonna feel uncomfortable and you're gonna get to get the burden of cancer off your shoulders. I have loved watching the children grow up it has been uh, just a true blessing to see the children, no matter what happens to the parent, to see them grow and thrive and use the resilience skills that they learned at Facing Cancer Together. Patients who are trying to deal with a cancer and have young kids are a very special uh, group of people. And FACT is one of the very few places where those kids can go and be comfortable and learn about the whole process. I just love having my mom. I think I'm just going to miss her so much when she dies, but I hope she'll have good, I really want her to have a good life so far. And we've just had great reviews from the participants, both from the parents and especially from the kids. She always kisses me goodnight and when she dies, she won't be able to give me a human kiss, but she'll give me light, beautiful angel kisses and I'll still feel them in my heart. All right, Sophie, what have you got? Trust. Okay, you put the trust rock in. Who else has got one? And what have you got, Maya? Love. Okay, let's put that one in there. As an acting board member, Margie would always bring in uh, letters and uh, responses from the, the kids and the parents about how important it was for them to just be able to be relaxed. And then the heartbreaking stories that the kids would tell us about, wanting to give mommy a kiss to be sure if she was still alive. What do you say? <laughs>